Hello, I'm Maggie York and I have Miss Edith Vasquez with me today. Hello everyone. We're instructors in the MLS department here at MetroTex and with the big matrix changes coming up March 1st, we wanted to take a minute to go over what big changes are coming to the listing input. So what changes will you see when entering a new listing? Starting off, we're gonna go into input right here, just as we normally would. And we're gonna go ahead and choose add new. And we do have a little bit of a change right off the bat here under select form for adding new property. Residential is there, but then we have residential income has taken the place of our multifamily. Residential lease, lots and acreage, and then commercial, instead of being commercial sale lease, is now commercial sale and commercial lease. Instead of being one and the same, they've been broken up into their own types. Let's go ahead and take a look at residential. And we've got the same options here, fill from existing listing, fill from real estate tax, or start with a blank property. We're going to go ahead and do fill from real estate tax, select our county, add in our property address, and see if we can find it. And so far, everything else looks about the same. And I'm going to go ahead and fill to enter in that information. And here we go on our residential listing input form. We do see a lot of change right off the bat, especially with our tabs. So there are quite a few more tabs than there was previously. But what they've done here, and you'll notice as we go throughout each one, is they've taken previously large pages with substantial amount of information and broken them up into smaller individual tabs. So whereas we had general tab here before, which included both our property info and our location in schools. We now just have property info all on its own. Property type is now property subtype with a few option changes under there for us. Property attached, yes, no, is a brand new available field. Our listing type is now called listing agreement type. Over here in the middle, what we had before our construction status is now just called year built detail slash construction status with our same options available. Next to that, we have year built has a friend right here, year built source, so wherever we got that number. So in this case, it came from tax records, which will be our public records. And then square foot, instead of just being square foot on its own, is now square foot slash living area. And it still has our square foot source and options underneath that. And the last one I almost missed is our construction from our previous build is now called construction material with all of our options there. All right, Edith, did I miss any big ones on this before we move on? No, oh, I think that's the, all the changes on this one. Excellent. Let's go look at our location slash schools. Now, location slash schools is like they copied and pasted off that general tab. There's not been any changes here other than it's on its own little tab. Location and school information has remained the same. So nothing to worry about there. Let's go take a look at our changes to our rooms. Now, in rooms, there's been a few name changes as well as options added under our type down here. So instead of stories, it is now levels with these following options available to you. And then instead of rooms, it is now type. So it is asking you, what is the room type? And our list has actually had some additions when it moved over to this build that we'll be working off of. So it's the previous options as well as the new additions. You can go and check those out. Now, although it's not changing, I did want to talk to you guys about full baths and half baths real quick. You will still come in here and fill out your full baths and half baths just as you normally would. The difference is going to be how total baths appear on a listing. So typically we would see two full baths, 
one half bath, and then for total baths, this would read as 2.1. When we move over to this new build, instead of 2.1, you'll see three. That will be the only change with full baths and half baths, is that total bath number instead of 2.1 would show as three. They're gonna use whole numbers to represent all of the baths. Alrighty. All right, let's go over here and look at our features. Features has had quite a few changes, starting with instead of our handicap features, yes, no, and handicap features with our long list of available options, it is now accessibility features, yes, no, and accessibility features. And I do believe that we have the original options as well as several more additions have been made to this list. So it's very nice. Even though there's not been a name change, I do know that pool features has had a couple of additions to their options as well. There is now a standalone basement, yes or no field. And then brand new to the listing input pages, we have over here our laundry features and list to choose from. We have window features and patio and porch features. And just in case you think you lost it, community features got the boot and is way down here at the bottom. So if you don't see it right off, just keep scrolling. All right, let's see what other changes we've seen. Over here on the right, in our garage section, there has been a couple of additions here. We have attached garage, yes or no. And with our length and width, we now have height. So garage length, garage width, and now garage height. All right. And I believe that's all for features. Edith, am I forgetting one? Uh, there was just a name update on, it used to be alarm and security. Now it's just security features. Right there. Instead of alarm and security, it is now just security th features. Thank you, Edith. You're welcome. All right, awesome. Let's go take a look at our lot info. Now, lot info is actually one of the ones that also had a solid breakdown, whereas this used to be one huge tab. Remember, it was lots, utility, and environment all in one spot. They now each have their own individual tabs. So looking at our lot info tab, not a whole lot changed here. So we still have our water features down at the bottom, lot information. The only changes we're gonna see is our lot size acreage, our ranges display just a little bit differently here. We now have a standalone horse permitted, yes, no. And then our lot size unit has an added square meters to it. Let's go look at utilities and see what changes we have found here. So street slash utilities remains the same. What they've done here is, whereas it used to be heating slash cooling, they broke them apart. Now we have heating on its own, cooling next to it on its own. Let's go look at environment, see what we find there. In environment, whereas this was three separate fields previously, Edith, what were those three different fields? Um, green energy and water used to be together. Now they are separate. And now they changed the um, green environment to green sustainability. All right. So it had three separate fields that they've broken apart. And then they have also added a couple of these fields for us. So from what I understand, the green energy and the water features used to be together just as energy efficiency or energy features, they get their own standalone. We now have green landscaping here, indoor air quality, green sustainability, and green energy generation. We also have the walking score, so walkability score, if you're able to go through the tax records or pull that from public record, 
can be added in here. And then with your energy efficiency, if there are any green certifications or verifications, you're able to come down here and add in your building verification with the corresponding information here. And then your green verification URL, you're able to come in and plug in right there with the corresponding information. And if there is more than one building verification or green verification you need to include, all you have to do is come down here to the little more and you can open up another section to include what you need. All right, let's go take a look at our financial. Now financial used to be both financial including the HOA information. It is now just the financial tab. There's not been really any changes made here. I know propo proposed financing has additional options available to choose from, but outside of that, financial remains unchanged. Looking at our HOA, HOA has just been taken off the fi financial page and put into its own section. There's not been any changes made to our HOA information here. Just easier to find. Next, we have our agent slash office. And in our agent slash office, there have been just a few changes. One being, instead of asking for the supervisor name and ID, they've just made it one little field for us here, supervisor ID, and it will auto fill in the name and office for that individual for us. So easy peasy on that one. We now also have dual slash variable fee instead of simply variable fee. So just a little bit of a name change. And then also been added freshly and new is our list agent texting allowed yes or no and co-agent list uh, texting allowed yes or no. So you can plug that in on your listing. Edith, did I miss anything else on this page? No, you got them all. Excellent, let's go ahead and take a look at our showing tab. So looking at our showing tab, the first thing that I notice is the showing requirements section right here, whereas this used to be showing type, it is now showing requirements. They did pull in all of the options available from showing type, but then included additional options as well. Several that jump out, to me are the pets on premises or occupied, restricted hours. So it's not just showing type, but also including requirements there for you as well that can now be added to your listing. Over here on the left, instead of key box type, we now have lock box type. And we have also added our lock box location there. So hopefully cut down on some of the hunting. And as far as our showing tab goes, unless I'm forgetting something, Edith, I believe that's the only changes there. And there is a couple of changes on seller type. It used to have REO only, and now you see in foreclosure, notice of default, and more options as well. Oh, now that you mention it, Edith, I do see quite a few changes in our seller type, quite a few more options available to us. Oh, there's that short sale she was talking about. There's notice of default in foreclosure. Excellent, very good to know. Thank you, Edith. You're welcome. All right, let's go take a look at our remarks. And so remarks, the big one on here is our listings will appear on whereas on our previous matrix, these were all automatically checked off for us, you will now have to manually come in and choose where you want those listings to appear on. So this is in regards to your syndication. You do have to manually check off where you want them to go out, or if you don't want them to go out at all, just leave them blank. That is up to you. And outside of our listings will appear on, everything else on remarks remains unchanged and should look familiar to you guys. The last one over here, it was condo slash farm and ranch. They've broken the, that one optional tab into two optional tabs for us, one containing just information for the condo if it applies, and the other containing information for farm and ranch if needed. No noticeable changes have been made to either of those. 
And the very last change that we're going to see in regards to our listings is in on our status tab. So we used to see on our status tab, incoming, active, and coming soon. Incoming has now been replaced with incomplete. It will still represent your draft listing, your work in progress that can be deleted at any time, but it is now incomplete, active, and coming soon. So it will not be called incoming any longer. And so that about wraps up all of our major changes when it comes to our listing input form. Hopefully you have found this helpful. Edith, did you have anything else for us or anything else we need to go over? Uh, yes. So with the new changes, Matrix will be offline beginning February 28th at 4 p.m. until March 1st at 10 a.m. Awesome. That's really great to know, Edith. So what I understand is during that time period, we won't be able to enter in any new listings, make changes to listings, no searches. Everything will be offline. Is that what you're saying, Edith? That is correct until 10 a.m. All right, well, that's great to know and keep in mind, guys, mark your calendar that between those that time frame, you won't be able to ac access the old matrix. All right, so just make note and we'll see the new changes when they get here, right? All right, well, y'all have a great and wonderful day.